Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have fill in the blanks of the following amortization schedule for a loan with four level payments. Okay, so here we have an amortization schedule, which shows us that for a certain time t, what our outstanding balance will be, what the interest is that accumulated since the last payment was made, and the principal that would be paid at time t. Okay, and so we were given a few values to start with, as well as the fact that after the fourth level payment, our outstanding balance is zero, and we don't need to find the interest accumulated at time equals zero because there is no interest at time equals zero, and there's also no principal paid or no payment made at time equals zero, and so we don't need to find that value either. Those values do not exist. But we wanna fill in the rest of these values in this table. And so in order to figure out how to fill in those blank spots in our table, let's first write down what we know. We know that the outstanding balance at time equals one is $732.84. We also know that the interest accumulated at time one is $57. And then finally, we know that the principal paid at time equals one is $217.16. Okay, and so how are we going to fill in any of these blanks using these three numbers. Well, the first thing that we should try to do is figure out what the outstanding balance was at time equals zero, right? What was the original amount for this loan that we are repaying with these four level payments? And so this should be pretty easy to figure out. We have the outstanding balance at time equals one. And so if we add the principal at time equals one, right, the amount that we paid, that amount was subtracted from the original outstanding balance. And so if we add the principal to the outstanding balance, we will have that original outstanding balance from the period before, right? Because the outstanding balance at time equals t plus one is equal to the previous outstanding balance at time equals t minus the principal at time equals t plus one, right? So if t is equal to zero, then that means that the outstanding balance at time equals one is equal to the outstanding balance at time equals zero minus the principal at time equals one. And so we know what the outstanding balance at time equals one is, right? That's what we have right here. And we know what the principal is at time equals one as well. We have that over here. And so if we add this to both sides, then we can solve for the outstanding balance at time equals zero, which would fill in this blank here. And so if we add the outstanding balance at time equals one plus the principal paid at time equals one, we will have the outstanding balance at time equals zero. And so let's do that we will have $732.84 plus $217.16. And if we add that together, we will get the outstanding balance at time equals zero. And if you did that, you would find that these two values added together would tell us that the outstanding balance at time equals zero is equal to $950.00. Okay, and so let's fill that in here. We'll have $950.00. And so now that we have filled that value in, what can we do now? Well, if we wanted to be able to calculate the second row, we would need to know how much interest is going to be paid at time equals two. And so in order to figure that out, we would need to multiply the interest rate times the outstanding balance at time equals one. However, we do not know what that interest rate is. And so what we're going to have to do is use the numbers we have to figure out what that interest rate would be. And so we're probably going to want to work with the accumulated interest at time equals one, since this was calculated using whatever interest rate that was, right? So how was this calculated? How was the interest accumulated at time equals one calculated? Well, this came from multiplying the previous outstanding balance by the interest rate, right? And we now know what the outstanding balance at time equals zero is. And so we can set up this equation that the outstanding balance at time equals zero times the interest rate is equal to the interest accumulated at time equals one. And so if we plug in what we know, we will have that 950 times I is equal to $57. And so if we divide both sides by 950, we would solve for I, the interest rate. And so I would be equal to 57 divided by 950, which is equal to 0 0.06. And so we now know that the interest rate is 0 0.06, and so if we multiply the interest rate by the outstanding balance at time equals one, that will give us the interest accumulated at time equals two, right? In order to figure out the interest accumulated at a particular period in time, you need to multiply the interest rate by the previous outstanding balance. And so we will have that I sub two is equal to 732.84 
times the interest rate 0 0.06, and that will be equal to $43.97. And so we can fill that in, we'll have $43.97, and so now we're going to want to know what the principal repaid is at time equals two. But in order to figure out that, we need to know how much the payments are. We need to know the amount of these four level payments. And so if we clean up our work here, in order to find the amount of the payments K, all we need to do is add the previous amount of interest at time equals one plus the principal at time equals one, right? Because the interest accumulated and the principal together will tell us how much was paid at that period of time because the payment first takes care of the interest and then the rest of it, the principal, is applied to the outstanding balance. Okay, so K will be equal to I sub one plus the principal at time equals one, which will be equal to 57 plus $217.16 and that will be equal to $274.16. And so that is the value of our payment. And so if we wanna know the principal at time equals two, we just have to subtract the interest accumulated at time equals two from that payment, right? Because the payment is first applied to the interest and then whatever is left is the principal, which is what gets subtracted from our outstanding balance. And so the principal at time two will be equal to $274.16 minus $43.97 and that will be equal to $230.19. And so we can fill that in. We'll have $230.19. Okay, and so if we subtract this amount from our outstanding balance at time equals one, that will give us the outstanding balance at time equals two. And so if you subtract 230.19 from 732.84, you will get 502.65. All right, and so then from this point forward, the process just repeats itself. It's a pretty straightforward process once you get used to it, but essentially you go through the same few steps. You find the interest by multiplying the interest rate by your outstanding balance. So if we multiply 0 0.06 by this outstanding balance, we will get an accumulated interest of $30.16. And then if we subtract this interest accumulated from the amount of the payment, that will give us the principal. So 274.16 minus 30.16 will be $244.00. And then if we subtract the principal from the outstanding balance at time equals two, we'll get the outstanding balance at time equals three. And so if we subtract $244 from 502.65, we will have 258.65. And then finally, for our last two spots, we will calculate the interest accumulated at time equals four, by multiplying the interest rate by our new outstanding balance at time equals three. And so if we multiply 0 0.06 by 258.65, you would get $15.52. And if you subtract this amount from this payment right here of 274.16, you would find the principal at time equals four, which will be $258.64. And 64 cents. Now, typically this should match up exactly with your outstanding balance, but because of how we've had to round our numbers, we have a little bit of a rounding error here. We have 64 cents instead of 65 cents. That's okay. If you were to subtract this from the outstanding balance, you technically would have one cent left. However, that is basically zero given the fact that we have been rounding off our numbers. And so since we're only off by 0 0.01, we can make the conclusion that we have correctly filled in this amortization schedule, right? This principle should either be the exact same value as your last outstanding balance before zero, or it should be very, very close within a cent or two, okay? And so that is how you fill in this amortization schedule. You just need to remember how to calculate your accumulated interest, your principal, and the outstanding balance. Okay, so for this example, we have a 30-year monthly payment mortgage loan for $300,000 is offered at an effective monthly interest rate of 0.5%. We want to find one, the monthly payment, two, the total principal and interest paid, three, the outstanding balance in five years, and four, the principal and interest paid in those five years. All right, and so let's go through this problem one step at a time. Let's start with number one here. We want to find the monthly payment that is being used to pay off this mortgage loan of $300,000. And so how are we going to calculate that? Well, first note that our interest rate here is an effective monthly interest rate of 0.5%. And so we know that I is equal to 0.005 and that is monthly. 
And we're told that we have a 30 year monthly payment mortgage loan, right? So we're making payments monthly over a 30 year period. And so how many total payments would we be making here, right? What would N be equal to? Well, since we have monthly payments for 30 years and there are 12 months in a year, if we multiply 12 times 30, that will tell us that we have 360 total payments that are going to be made for this mortgage loan of $300,000, okay? And so if we wanna figure out what the monthly payment is, just remember that loan repayment is an example of a present value scenario, right? The mortgage loan of $300,000 is the present value of your payments that you would be making towards that loan, right? So in this case, if we had the present value of our payments K, we would multiply it by the formula for the present value of an annuity immediate, but we do know what the present value is. It's $300,000, right? That's the loan. And we know that N is 360, and our interest rate is 0 0.005. And so we'll have that 300,000 is equal to K times A, where N is 360, bracket 0 0.005, our interest rate. Okay, and so then if we write out this formula, we'll have that 300,000 is equal to K times one minus the present value factor to the power of 360 divided by 0 0.005. Okay, and so then in order to calculate this, you need to remember that the present value factor here would be equal to one divided by one plus the interest rate to the power of 360. And so remembering that, if you were to plug this into your calculator and divided both sides by that value, you would solve for K and you would find that the amount of the payments K is equal to $1,798.65. Okay, so that would be the first answer to this problem. We found the answer for number one. And then number two wants us to find the total principal and interest paid for this entire problem, right? For all 30 years that this loan is being repaid for. And so if we clean up our work here, we'll move on to calculating number two. And the total principal that's going to be paid in this problem is probably the easiest part of this entire problem because the total principal is the entire loan, right? The principal of each of your payments is what is being actually paid towards the loan while ignoring all of the interest, right? So the total principal will be equal to that loan. It will be $300,000. That is the total amount that you will have to pay towards that loan right? It's not going to be any more. It's not going to be any less. You obviously are going to pay more money for the interest, but that's what the second part says. We want to find the total principal and the interest paid. And so what would the total interest be? What would capital I sub capital T be equal to? Well, remember our payments that we're making are paid towards the accumulated interest and towards the principal. And so if we add up all 360 of our payments and subtract the total principal, that will tell us how much interest we paid for that full 30 years, right? So if we take our payment of $1,798.65 and multiply it by 360, right? That would be the total amount for the payments that we are making towards this loan and subtract the principal 300,000 that will tell us the amount of interest that we paid. And so if you were to multiply these two numbers together and subtract 300,000, you would find that it is equal to $347,514.57. Now that seems ridiculous, but that is the amount of interest that we paid for this mortgage loan over the 30 year period. Okay, and so now we're done with number two of this problem. And so let's clean up our work again. Next, we're gonna work on number three, where we wanna find the outstanding balance in five years, okay? And so how are we going to calculate that? Well, there's two different methods you could use, and you could watch our lesson video on this topic if you wanna see both methods, but for this video, I'm just going to look at one of them, and we are going to use what is called the prospective method, which allows us to calculate the outstanding balance at any point in time during the amortization process by just finding the present value of the payments we have yet to make, right? So if we wanna know the outstanding balance in five years, then we would just have to find the present value of the payments we did not make at that five year mark, right? So at five years, we have already made five years worth of payments. And so just to do some side math, if we are doing 12 payments per year because they are monthly payments 
and we're multiplying that by five years, that is equal to 60, all right? So five years in, we have made 60 payments, which if we subtract that from our total amount of payments, right, 360 minus 60, that means we still have 300 payments left to make. And so if we take the present value of those 300 payments, that will be how much more we have yet to pay off. And so we'll have that the outstanding balance at time equals five, which is a present value in this case, will be equal to our payment $1,798.65 times the notation of A, N, where N is equal to 300. So we will have 300 and then bracket and then our interest rate 0 0.005. Okay, and so this will be equal to 1798.65 times one minus the present value factor to the power of 300 divided by 0 0.005. And so then if you plug this into your calculator, remembering to change the present value factor to what it is equal to, you will find that this is equal to $279,163.07. And that will be the outstanding balance at time equals five. Right, this is capital O, capital B, sub five. That is the answer to number three. And so if you wanted to see how this would be calculated using the retrospective method, I'll have that work up here on the screen for you to reference and you can pause the video if you wanna look at it. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But remember, both methods will work and get you the same answer. Okay, and so then let's move on to our fourth problem. And so let's clean up our work here. And so for number four, we wanna find the principal and interest paid in those five years. And that is referring to those first five years that we were interested in when we calculated the outstanding balance in number three. Okay, and so be careful, that is different than asking for the principal and interest paid in the fifth year. It is asking how much was paid in those five years, right? All five years, the total amount in those five years, not just the amount for that fifth year. Okay, and so let's start by calculating the principal paid in those five years, because that's actually going to be the easiest part. Since we already know the outstanding balance in year five, all we have to do to figure out how much we have paid in principal so far is to subtract the outstanding balance in year five from the original outstanding balance of $300,000, right? So if we take the original loan amount or our original outstanding balance at time equals zero and subtract the outstanding balance at time equals five, that will tell us how much in principle we paid in those first five years, okay? And so if we take our outstanding balance and subtract it from 300,000, we will find that the principal paid in those five years is $20,836.93. All right, and so that is the principal paid in those five years. But how about the interest paid in those five years, right? How are we going to find that? Well, similar to how we found the total interest in number two for all 30 years, we can do a similar process to find the amount of interest accumulated in the first five years. Right, so what we'll do is we will add up all of our payments made in those first five years and then subtract the principal paid and that will tell us how much of our payments was paid towards the interest. So we'll take our payment amount, which is 1798.65 and multiply it by the amount of payments we made in those first five years, which remember we calculated this earlier, we are making 60 payments in the first five years because there's 12 months in five years and so 12 times five is 60. And so we'll multiply our payment amount by 60 and that will give us the total amount of our payments paid in those first five years. And then we will subtract the principal in those five years, right? The amount that we just calculated. So we are going to subtract $20,836.93. And if you do that, if you take this amount times 60 and subtract this amount, that will be equal to 87,000 $82.17. That is the amount of interest paid in those first five years, right? That is the interest. Okay, and so with that, we have now completed all four parts of this problem. And that is all I had for this example, as well as this example's video. And so if you had any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.